Hi, in this session I'm going to show you how to create a stack column chart with arrows at the end. In about a minute I'll show you what it looks like. But let's say for example you're used to creating stack column charts that look at this type of data. Let's say we have a positive values, neutral values, and negative values. So basically three, three values in the criteria. And so for example in this table we're looking at industries that have positive customer perceptions, neutral customer perceptions, and negative customer perceptions. And I'm, I'm showing some industries such as internet service providers, airlines, banks, uh, for full service restaurants. So if you read the news recently, internet service providers have had very bad or very negative uh, customer se sentiments. Customers perceive them pretty negatively. And these are not the real values, these are just something I made up but this is just to show an example of some other industries. Airline industries usually they have pretty bad uh, customer perceptions. Now a full service restaurant, like a five star restaurant, uh, most of the time people have pretty positive to neutral uh, customer perceptions and maybe not uh, not that high of a negative perception. So this basically should equal up to 100%. You can see here we have it up to 100% and the same here. And if we use this table and plot out this stack column chart, this is what we would get. Uh, basically service providers, you can see the bunch of red here and as we go down to the bottom, the full service restaurants, mostly it's green for positive and a little bit of red here. But let's say we wanted to add a little bit more visual appeal to it, something like this, where we would show the negative values as an arrow pointing down and the positive values as the arrows pointing up and we would have the neutral values as kind of a, a gray box in between. This is another way to create some visual appeal uh, rather than have a stack column chart, create something with a little bit more emphasis on upwards and downwards uh, views. So this is also a stack column chart but we're doing it a different way. Let me show you how to create something like this. So what we want to do first is we want to make sure we create our table correctly. Now you'll notice here I have two neutral columns. This first neutral column is basically the middle between the up arrows and the, the down arrows and that's all going to be zeros. Now I added this other neutral column which is the exact values as you see here when we had here this 5, 10, well it was, it's going to supposed to be like that. Like you can see I changed some of the values here to equal uh, to 100%. So this all should be equal to 100%. 10 plus 75 is 85 plus 15 is 100. 15 and 60 is 75. 25 is 100 and the rest follows. That all equals 100%. One trick that we need to do here also is to make these negative numbers. As you can see if I click in the cell you'll notice that there's a minus 75, minus 60, minus 20, minus 10 but how come it doesn't show as minus? Basically that's just cell formatting. So just to show you how that's done, let's say that I did uh, minus 15% here. You'll see that that minus shows up, but how come it doesn't show up here? Well, what we do is we, we're changing the formatting. So if I select on that and I right click and I go into format cells, I need to change the custom, I need to create a custom number format for that those cells. And that is going to be here. You select custom here and what you're going to type is 0% semicolon 0%. So let's say for example when I type minus 15% here I can change that to show that it doesn't have that minus sign but really in Excel's background it's going to count that as minus X percent. So let's say I don't want to have that minus show up here. I'm going to go and right click, go into format cells, go into custom, and since I've already created it here, it's going to show up here at the bottom, I believe. Yes, right here. So basically it's 0% semicolon 0%. And what it does is it takes this first value is all for all positive numbers. You want to have all positive numbers represented by a percentage uh, 0 or not, not negative. And the second one is how do you want to format your negative values? So I'm going to format it as also a positive value when you really think about it. Basically it's just the way it looks. It doesn't affect the background when you do calculations. It's going to recognize it, that it's a negative number. So if I click OK, you'll see that now that negative number disappears. 
this is just formatting. So let me show you another example of how this could be, what, what, what it may look like. Let me go into Format Cells. And let's say, for example, I create a new one, or maybe I just readjust this one. And in brackets, I put red. So basically, I'll, I want the negative number to be a red font color. So I click OK, and now it's turned that red because it recognizes that that is negative. So I'm not going to have that done there. I'm just going to go ahead and Command-Z to undo. Let's just delete that. I don't really need that there. So what I've done now is, once I've got that formatting done, what happens there is when, when this, this series of values gets charted over here, you can see it doesn't become negative. Because right, we're just looking at uh, the positive and negative entries. Visually, we just want to see is it above the chart or below the chart. So with that done, I'm going to go ahead and just copy this table over to another sheet. So as I said before, we have this other neutral column here. This basically becomes values over here for these particular blocks of text. So let me go ahead and show you how to create this chart. Let me go ahead and copy this table. Select the hippo, control C to copy, go to sheet sheet three, control V to paste. Let me make this a little bit bigger here. Alright. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to select the cells A1 to D5, just this range, and go under insert column and to stacked column. So what it does is create a stacked column chart here, and I want to pull these category values to the top. So I want to select these axis labels here. These are the category axis. Right click and go into format axis and then what I want to do is I want to have these axis labels high. Select that. It's going to go to the very top. Go ahead and click close. And I don't like these grid lines usually so I'm just going to go ahead and select that and press delete to get rid of them. Now how do I get the arrows? Well what I'm going to do is create insert and arrow first. So I'm going to go under insert tab under the illustrations group select arrow. I'm going to select this. I'm going to select the up arrow first and I'm going to draw it here just anywhere and basically just don't need to draw it too big just draw the size that you like. And now it's got these borders so I don't want to have those borders there. I'm going to go and right click that arrow and actually with the smart menu here I'm going to go ahead. This is the shape outline. I don't want an outline so I'm going to go and click that and choose no outline. I'm also going to have this color green because I wanted to do the positive arrow, the positive areas first. I'm going to right click that and select green, this green. And I'm also going to add a little, little pizzazz to it because basically we want to do as much formatting to the arrow before we put, put it over to the chart. So I'm going to right click here and go under format shape again and under the 3D format style I'm going to choose width of 5 and then the height of 2. So that's going to give it a little neat little 3D shape here. Click close and now I've got my 3D green arrow which I'm going to apply to these positive areas here. So I'm going to go and select that press Control C to copy select one of the columns make sure they're all selected and then press Control V to paste. Now I've got my positive green arrows. Now I want to change my lower columns to downward arrows. So what, I'm going to, what I need to do is change the orientation of this arrow. I'm going to, what I'm going to do is select that arrow, go under the Drawing Tools Format tab, and under the Arrange Grouping, click Rotate and ro flip vertical. It's going to make it go upside down. And I want to change the color here too. I'm going to right click this or even just go up once it, I have my format here, change the shape fill color here. I can either right click it and that's going to be here or I can just change it up here and I can change it to red. Now we've got a nice red color. I'm going to control C to copy, select this column. It selects all those columns, control V to paste. So now I want to have my text box kind of represent the middle which is my neutral category. So for my text box, let me go under insert text box and just draw it out here first to do some formatting. And for this, the, since it's the first one, I'm just going to have a point to this neutral value. So up here in the formula bar, I'm going to go 
equal E2. So it's going to click and make that an absolute cell reference to E2. And once I press either enter or just click the check mark, it's going to add it in there. So what I want to do also is do some additional formatting. I probably want to select that, select that, right click, go into format object, and change some attributes. I don't want to have any margins within that box. So I'm going to go and select text box and any of the margins there, I'm just going to bring it down to zero. And also what I want to do is I want to get a, give it a 3D format shape. I'm going to give that one a five and then it a two and then the fill color, let's make that gray. Let's make it a solid fill. We'll make that a gray color here. All right click close and I want to adjust these to center align both in the top and bottom so I'm since this is still selected I'm going to go under the home tab and under alignment middle line so it's in the middle and then I will want the center line so oops and I want the center line here now also the font size is a little bit big I think we had this at 10 so I'm just going to go ahead and click here whoops click in there and then reduce the font size to 10. Now you notice that it's a little bit bigger than this so depending on which one you want to adjust you can adjust the arrows or you can adjust the box. Let's say you didn't want the arrows that skinny. We want to make it a little bit bigger. What I can do is I can right click any one of the arrows and go into format data series and with the series options I want to make that gap maybe a little bit lesser. Uh, let's see. Let's so it's going to reduce the gap here. Uh, 100, maybe, let's try 55. See how that works. Tab. Okay, then maybe that's a little bit too fat. Let's make it 60. Tab. That seems okay. I'm going to close that. And I'm going to bring the box here. It's a little bit big, so I'm just going to make it a little smaller. Just make that a little bit smaller. Maybe just a little bit smaller. And then I can use my arrow keys to find two. Oh, there's a one there. Let me delete that. I'm going to use my select that, use my arrow key. Whoops, that one's there too. All right, so let me see if I can move that around. Okay, so that might not be too bad. And so I've got that set there now. So what I want to do if I want to, I want to duplicate this three more times. So I can just click on that and it's selected. Press Control D to duplicate and move it over here. So I don't want the cell to reference B E2. I want the cell to reference E3. So I'm going to go ahead and click over here equals E3. Press enter and now it's 25 percent. Duplicate that control D and I want to have that represent E4. So I'm going to press up in the formula bar equal and then click E4. Press enter. Now it's turned to 30 percent and I want to press control D to duplicate maybe move this over here a little bit and now I'm gonna have that also referenced the bottom E5 here press enter so now I've got my arrows that are red the bottom arrows and the top arrows which are green what I want also maybe want to do is change the, f the way that it looks the formatting of it I don't want to have that negative I just want to have it 20% above, 20% below. So I'm going to go ahead and right click this, click on format access. So under number, there also is a custom category. And you can see since I've already done it before, it has that type there. Make sure it's 0%, semicolon 0%. Click close, and now you can see the negative number is gone. The value behind it is still there, but just visually, the, the way it's showing is it's not there anymore. So I probably need to adjust these things here. Once in a while, when you change things to the slide, it might uh, adjust, and you would need to um, just kind of line them up a little bit better here. So let me move that around, move that around. OK. And we notice here that our, our neutral value here is red. We don't want that. We want that to be gray, just like it's gray here. Let me move that one over there. So what I'm going to do is click on to the legend here and right and make sure neutral is selected and right click that and change the fill for neutral. I think we had it in here for the middle one here. And now it's gray. 
and let me just go ahead and delete this arrow. It doesn't do anything. So now we have our stack column chart with arrows that represent the positive values and the negative values and these gray text boxes that represent neutral values. So here's another way to represent a stack column chart where we can look at it a little bit more visually so we can give it maybe a little bit more of a visual appeal. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos from me, click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and leave a comment below. I'd like to hear from you and hope to see the feedback. Also, do you think others might benefit from this video? If so, click the share text below. YouTube will automatically provide a shortened link to this video and give you options to share on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and other social networking sites. Again, thanks for watching.